In this video, we're going to cover how to optimize your order and shipping confirmation email so that you can maximize your sales and the customer experience. Now, don't worry, these are only minor changes, so it's not like a big task or anything. Um, I'm using Shopify, but the same principles apply to any other platform you may be using. So if we just go to the emails themselves, uh, notifications, here we go. So there's three main ones to focus on because the other ones are very rarely uh, if ever used. So it's the abandoned cart email or abandoned checkout and then the order confirmation email and then the shipping confirmation email too. Now, if you're using email marketing, which I do recommend that you do, that's a whole nother topic um, for if you want to do that for your abandoned checkouts or you can just use what's inbuilt into the platform. So if you use abandoned checkout, whether you're using Shopify or email marketing or anything else, it's always good to have the customer's first name in the subject line. So they've done it, if we look at the preview, they've done it in the actual body, but that's no good because people, that's only if someone actually reads the email. If they don't read the email, then that's no use. So if you've ever read the book, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, it's a really good book, I do recommend it. Uh, but one of the biggest things they say in there is that people love hearing and seeing and reading their own names, like it's just a thing humans love. So include names as much as possible. So in Shopify's default one, they haven't included it. So what you do is just you put this here, customer.firstname, which is sort of included in here, you just copy and paste it, and then comma, complete your purchase. Um, and then that's it. So when you do the preview, it'll now have John complete your purchase and then everything else. Everything else looks fine. Um, it was just that point that it's really important to have first names in the actual subject line. And doing that also uh, stops your email from getting marked as spam a lot of the time because it shows you actually know the person who you're emailing. The other thing I would actually change, so Shopify also defaults to complete your purchase. And what I found is that my... Uh, abandoned cart recovery was slightly lower than the average and I was trying to think of why that was and then I made a very small change so complete your purchase sort of suggests that let me show you it sort of suggests that if I click this button it might mean that I'm about to be charged or like I'm just going to pay for this order because it says complete and that in itself might put people off because if they've already put in their payment information and then they abandon their checkout, they don't want to click this button if they think it's just going to immediately buy the product for them. So I actually changed this. So for example, here you could put, John, did you forget something? And then that's just a lot more playful, a lot more conversational and a lot less pushy in terms of, you know, complete your purchase. And it just avoids the problem of them thinking that you, they're going to immediately have to buy something. And then if you want to change it in the actual email itself, so I don't know coding or anything like that at all, um, but it's actually quite easy. So all you do is do control or command F to do find, and then just find the word purchase. And then, yeah, you can ignore all the code and just focus on the actual words here. So complete your purchase. I normally change that to something along the lines of return to shopping cart or like return to your order or continue um i just wouldn't put complete because that does suggest that they might be paying for the order as soon as they click so if we look at that now that's a lot better now so john did you forget something and then we've mentioned shopping cart here there's some items left and then this just says return to your shopping cart and then that's just so much better than saying, you know, complete your purchase. So that's the small optimization I'd make on Shopify. But if you've got something else, then still just stick to those principles of include the first name and don't make it so that your email looks like they may be paying for something without really having time to confirm it if they click any button. So just make it very inviting and very safe for them to return to the page to where they initially were. So that's abandoned cart. Then if we go back, yeah, leave page. Now for order confirmation, this one's typically fine because they've already made the purchase, right? So things are good. The thing I would do here is, so order confirmation is one of those emails, one of the few emails that are read at a very high percentage. So most emails they get, I think around 
with 15, 20, 25 percent open rate if they're really good. Um, but order confirmations get a much higher one because obviously the customer is already interested and engaged with you because they've just bought something. And B, they'll just like read it to check that everything looks legit. So what I like to do in here, and again, if you're using an email marketing app to do this for you, then that's fine. But this principle still applies of, I would add a discount code or something that will either get them to shop back in the future or literally immediately. So again, this doesn't require any code if you are using Shopify. If you go to uh, just where the text is, so we're getting your order ready to be shipped. We'll notify you when it's been sent. After that, you can just put something as simple as for your next order, get a 10% discount by using the code. And then you can just put whatever your code is that you set up in Shopify in the discount section here or whatever platform you're using. And then immediately you've got an email that most people read and in the first sentence, not only does it just say, you know, we're getting your, or the first paragraph, but not only are we getting your order shipped, but for your next order, get 10% off. And then that will immediately get them to visit your store again and buy something, or they'll hang on to that code and potentially use it in a few days or a few weeks or even a few months. Like it's a good way to immediately reward your customer and encourage future sales. So. I definitely recommend doing something like that. Or if you don't want to offer it to them immediately, you can just then set up email marketing to send them an offer in a week or two weeks or a month or whatever you choose. So but that's the little optimization I'd recommend for that. And then finally, we've got the, just leave this, the shipping confirmation. which might actually be okay. Yeah, so that's that's fine. There is one thing that I would add, but I'm actually gonna cover it in the next section, which is about customer management. So in order emails, um, I like to include a link to a frequently asked questions page. And then that way it minimizes your work because when customers get these emails, they can just sort of answer their own questions without contacting you for information. But I'll cover that in the next section. So stay tuned.